Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to give a brief overview of a very important book that I came across a year ago, which is written by Ananda Kumar Swami. Now a couple months ago I made a video about Ananda Kumar Swami's life, works and some of his ideas, and I decided to make a few videos about his books, reviewing his books and going over some of the topics that he covers in them. Now the book that I'm going to show you today is this book, The Essential Ananda Kumara Swami. I came across this book a year ago and it completely changed my life and my view of art and metaphysics in a large extent, to a large extent. And I'm very glad that I came across it and was able to read it. Quite interestingly, in the beginning, I wasn't interested in Ananda Kumar Swami that much. I was reading Gyanon and Friedrich Schuan a lot. And when I came across the, the name of Ananda Kumar Swami and the fact that he was a art historian and a basically art scholar, I wasn't that much drawn to art in, this, in that sense because I thought that his works are basically historical studies until I realized this man was a metaphysician of the highest order and a philosopher of art who is unparalleled in the modern world. We don't have anyone like Kumara Swami with such level of erudition and knowledge. He knew 27 languages or 36 in total. And he was versed in the different scriptures of the West, of the East, of Islam, of uh, Taoism, of Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianity and many, many more different traditions. He was a remarkable metaphysician and art historian, and he is really unparalleled in the modern world, and unfortunately, people do not read him. He is very, he's pretty much unknown in the modern world. Anyhow, a year ago, I decided to give him a try and purchase one of his books. So I decided to go with this book, The Essential Ananda Kumara Swami, which is published by, by World Wisdom. I decided to buy this book and just read through it and see what he's all about, what he's talking about. And immediately I was hooked. I was so absorbed and drawn to his writings that I just forgot about the other writers that I was reading. For example, Genon and Xuan were my main interests, but I found myself just ordering Kumara Swami's works and reading them cover to cover. I was so addicted to his writings that I I was drawing so much information and knowledge from his um, from his essays and books that I was it was just very pleasurable and very uh, it was a great time really and the reason that I'm mentioning this book is because I believe that this is the best book to begin with this is the first book of Kumar Swami that I read the first book from Kumar Swami that I ever read and I'm glad that I started with this because it covers the different areas of Kumar Swami's interest and vision and the many areas of his um, of his interests. For example, he covers metaphysics, he covers the philosophy of art, he covers criticism of the modern world and so forth. The article the articles contained in this book were collected by his son, Rama P. Kumar Swami, who was a surgeon and a very interesting figure. He, he himself was a traditionalist writer. And the book begins with an introduction to Kumar Swami's life, his works and so forth. And then we have a number of articles which are quite remarkable. For example, the first article is a figure of speech or a figure of thought which I believe is a synthesis of Kumar Swami's view of the metaphysics of art. And I've, I think I've read this article more than seven times or so. It's, it's a remarkable work. The second article is Bugbeer of Literacy. The third is on the pertinence of philosophy. He discusses the meaning and the essence of what philosophy is, compares it to Aristotelian uh, vision of philosophy, definition of philosophy, and so forth. Eastern wisdom and Western knowledge, beauty and truth. He discusses the relation between beauty and truth and the metaphysics of beauty, the interpretation of symbols, 
Kumaraswamy was a remarkable symbolist. He was a remarkable scholar of symbols. And he had an extensive knowledge of different symbolisms throughout the world. For example, the symbolism of the animals, the geometrical figures and so forth. And he regarded symbolism to be the precise language of metaphysics. And he believed that it is as complicated as a subject like chemistry and one must put effort and time in order to understand symbolism in its um, wider range. Now, the other articles are, for example, why exhibit works of art? The Christian and Oriental or true philosophy of art. Is art a superstition or a way of life? Nobody, I believe, in the modern world has explained the traditional view of art better than Kumaraswamy. He has, a vi he has this remarkable dictum and saying, which is quite famous for his, between his readers. He says, an artist is not a special type of man, but every man is a special type of artist. What he basically meant was that everybody is born for a specific work. Because in Kumaraswamy's perspective and also the traditional view of art, everybody is an artist. It's not just the musicians and the painters who are artists, but a farmer, a surgeon, a teacher, a writer, an essayist, a doctor can be an artist. Art is about doing something correctly. And it's not just about aesthetics. And aesthetics, according to Kumaraswamy, comes from a Greek word which means perception by feeling. And he says that our modern view of art is just an enjoyment of comfortable feelings and it has nothing to do with the intellectual virtues, virtues of art. And he has written remarkable passages on the meaning of art and he has criticized modern art to it extensively in his writings. The other articles are, for example, the nature of medieval art. And there is this Latin title here, Ars Sine Scientia Nihil. I hope I pronounced it correctly, said it correctly, but which basically talks about that art and science are basically the same thing. And you cannot say, okay, this is science and this is art, but these two have to be um, connected, so to speak. We have what is civilization. Now, this it's not about civilization and culture as we understand it today, but it's about the metaphysics of civilization and the body politic according to Plato. Now, all of these articles here, even though the title may seem a bit dry for the uninitiated reader, the articles are highly metaphysical. His works are remarkable. I would highly recommend you to read the writings of Kumaraswamy, whom I believe that we should read more and more and more and get to know him better. He deserves much, much, much more attention than, let's say, for example, Carl Jung or Freud and so forth. He is, I believe, more erudite than even those figures and many, many other um, scholars whom we know. As Philip Zaleski has written as a review of this book, he says, Kumar Swami's essays, learned, elegant and wise, are one of the greatest treasures of 20th century thought. To read them is to see the world in the clear light of tradition to understand art and philosophy from the viewpoint of first principles, to be reminded of our sacred calling and, and of the one who calls us. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.